This is the science of beards, and I know it's a kind of different class, but I'm excited to bring it to barbers because we and my, I have a couple people with me over here. This is Steve. He goes by the mayor. He is uh, currently, <laughs> currently a teacher, hopefully retiring soon with the channel as well. And we have a show that's called Beard Advice Live on YouTube where guys send in pictures of their beards. And we literally have guys that cry because they've gone to the barber and they cared so much about their beard and they left and their beard was not the way that they wanted it. And it is years of growth that has been ruined because something was broken in communication and expectations. So that's my main thing is to go over how to get the most out of beards and out of beard care. And uh, like I said, full-time content creator, 60,000 something subscribers on YouTube uh, in just over four years. And then the number I'm the most proud of is 45 million minutes watched, uh, which is like staggering to me, right? Anybody can have views. If you click a video for five seconds, it's a view. Uh, if you subscribe, it's a, a subscribe number. But if you fully watch the video, that's time that goes through and shows that they're actually consuming the content, which is really cool. So that's the channel there. I'll have a QR code uh, if you guys throw out, if you guys want to check it out. <clears throat> and I am a teacher, so <laughs> the, uh, just because I left public school education doesn't mean that I don't continue to teach. My channel is very like education based. So we're going to have our kind of class goals and agenda today. And the main thing is I want to help barbers understand how beards are different from head hair. Uh, they are very different in more ways than most people realize. And I'll talk about it on the slides, but barbers often are the front lines with beard education. Guys go to their barber expecting them to be experts on beards, and unfortunately there's not a lot of education out there about beards and about the differences. So hopefully this will help out. And I want to educate on proper beard care routines. Same kind of idea. Most guys don't grow up being taught how to take care of their beard. They're taught how to shave, right? That's a manly thing. You get that, they literally have play sets at stores of, of play shaving things. I've never seen a play beard oil, right? I've never seen a play beard butter. So you're grown up like, hey, as men, we shave. And you remember that moment your dad taught you how to tie a tie. You remember the moment your dad taught you how to shave. Not many have the moment where their dad taught them how to take care of their beards. So I want to make sure that barbers are equipped with that information on the proper ways because it is different than head hair. And I want to give some food for thought on trimming approaches. The way that you approach a beard is so different than the way you approach head hair for many reasons that I'm going to lay out on the show today. And I want to put this on here with like complete and utter respect to all barbers out there. As I said, I know many of you have years of experience with beards. I'm not diminishing any of that. I just want you to think. I just want you to give me a chance. And I will ask you to keep an open mind because oftentimes when you think of like a beard YouTuber, um, barbers will kind of shun it or dismiss it and think, hey, I know way more, more about this stuff. And I've, I fully value your experience. I just want you to think. I just want you to consider what I have to say. And as I said, I think it might surprise you. I believe I have value that I can add to your table. And I appreciate you guys giving me your time and giving it a shot here. So that's what we're going to go through today. We have about an hour uh, for the class. And... Hopefully, we'll have a time for questions at the end, too. So beards are different. So some facts to begin with here about how beards are different. Number one, we have less sebaceous glands on our face than we do on our scalp. With that, we have less sebum oil production. And sebum oil is extremely important, and it's very different with a beard. What sebum oil is is the lubrication for comfort and for health. Right, and here's an example where you can prove this. Any of the, the guys out there with beards, go a week without taking a shower, right? Some of you may already. Now, just observe it. <laughs> I'm glad that the rows are spread out a little bit here in that case. But just observe the differences between your head hair and your beard. After a week, your beard is going to be a dry, brittle bird's nest. Your head hair is likely going to be a greasy, nasty mess up here. Very, very different. And the reason why is we have less sebaceous glands and less sebum oil. And what happens is when your beard grows out, that sebum oil wants to coat and protect the hairs. But what happens is it gets leached away from the face. And the face is where we need it the most, right? And what kills most beards? Bad beard products, but then also the itching phase. Guy, you've probably heard family members, friends say, I can't get past the itching phase. Well, that's because the sebum oil is being pulled away from their face. We don't have that with head hair. No one ever grows out their head hair and says, I can't get past the itching. It doesn't happen because they're structured differently. 
And that's one of the biggest reasons why we have to approach beard care, beard trimming, beard health different than head hair is because of that sebum oil. And beard products essentially try to mimic and enhance that natural sebum oil, right? If you have a beard my length, I don't care how genetic of a freak you are, you're not gonna produce enough sebum oil to have comfort and style for this beard. Also, you have about one third the amount of hairs on your facial hair as you do your head hair. Three times as many hairs up here. Some people have five times as many hairs up here. Some have zero. I mean, if you have hair, right, we gotta consider that. But on average, you have three times as less hairs and follicles on your face. That's a big deal, right? The spacing, uh, the, the way the hairs are structured. And also, the hair follicle on the face is larger and flatter than what's on your scalp. And the reason that that's important is because the way the hair grows is based on that base, based on that follicle. And it causes the hairs to be thicker, more coarse, and more brittle. and could cause them to be twisted in shape, and especially on different ethnicities. We have different shapes, different styles. That all has to do with the follicle where it's attached to the face. And something that's not thought of or talked about enough is that your beard is directly below your mouth and your mustache is right above your lips. So when people say things like, hey, you shouldn't wash your head hair every day. Let's rotate days, let's take days off. A beard's very different, right? Imagine having crumbs in your beard and somebody saying, don't wash your beard. That's gross. Common sense should take place there and say, hey, we need to wash it, right? Your mustache causes problems. So if you're trying to eat ice cream or trying to eat chicken wings, you need to wash your beard. There's so many, and we're going to talk about some of the myths that when it comes to beards, that's one of the biggest ones. You can't treat it the same way because your mouth is a big deal. And then, as I said here, barbers are the front line for info. Most men learn about beard care, beard grooming, beard styling, and anything else related from their barbers or YouTube. A huge market of my subscribers and friends are what we call freedom beards. And these are guys that joined the military. They shaved every single day of their life in the military. And then when they get out of the military, the last thing they want to do is ever see a razor again. But oftentimes, when you have those guys, especially the career military men, their dad is no longer with them, or their dad never had a beard in his life, and he wanted to start taking care of his beard, they didn't know where to go. They don't have some education source. So they're like, who deals with hair? Barbers. All right, teach me about beards. So we want to make sure we know that. And I want you to have the best info so the beards keep coming back to you. If a guy goes to you for a beard trim and he feels like he paid money for something that made him cry, he's never going to come back to you. That's income taken away from you, right? My buddy Doug over here, he's an audio video teacher, beardsman for a long time. He had, I trim my own beard. Steve trims his own beard. Doug goes to a barber every single time. He's willing to drive. He's willing to tip him very well. He's willing to pay if the price goes up because he trusts that barber. It's very, very important to find that trust because if, if they leave without feeling trusted, they're never coming back to you again. So any information that can help you is gonna help your pocket as well. So that's super, super important and a confident beardsman is a happy beardsman. All right, beard care routine. We're gonna get into the trims and all that, but this is important here because when they go to you, they wanna know how to keep it healthy. They wanna know how to make it look good. And here's some basics. The most important product that you can have for a beard is beard oil. It's exactly like I talked about earlier with that sebum oil, you not have enough, that beard oil is going to kind of replace and mimic that sebum oil. Oftentimes possibly better than what the human body can produce. Other than that, the second most important product is beard wash. You need to wash your beard. Anybody that says that you don't need to, they just don't know what they're talking about. Why we get, if you sweat, you get sodium building up in your pores. That's going to block the, the pores from being able to breathe, to grow, to get the nutrients to where they need to go. We need to clear those things out. We need to get rid of things like wax. We need to get rid of things like dirt, like food, all those things. You got to wash your beard. And there are different beard washes. We can get into like the, the science of a daily wash compared to a uh, stripping wash. It all comes down to the pH level of the product and what it does to the abrasiveness of the skin and the hair. Beard butter. That is something that's for deeply nourishing the beard. I prefer to use beard butter at night. Go to bed, you wake up, and your beard feels fresh, feels amazing, as compared to not, right? Because at night, you're not drinking water. You're not being active. You're just staying asleep. And so having that beard butter is kind of going to work for you. Beard balm is to style but also nourish the beard. 
Beard wax or mustache wax is just strictly for style purposes. We should never put hairspray on a beard. We should never put anything that is a bad type of alcohol on the beard, right? There's good types of alcohols and conditioners and washes, but we don't want to put any kind of hairspray that is alcohol-based. And then the last thing is beard conditioner. That's to detangle and kind of soften the beard. All of those are, are things that can really help out the health and the appearance of the beard. And here are some never-evers that we see and hear a lot when it comes to barbers. Number one, never ever have a silicone ingredient in a leave-in beard product. Beard oils, beard butters, and beard balms should never have a silicone ingredient. Unfortunately, there's a couple of big name brands that use like foaming beard oils or use some of these products that do have silicones. And as most of you know, what silicones do is they coat the hair, they give it a shine, they give it a glisten, but it adds no nutritional value and it actually deters from the health of the beard. And we can achieve all those things you want with good quality ingredients. If you want to shine, we can find you a one. If you want something to be more matte, we can find that. But there's never a reason or excuse to have silicones in a beard other than if you want that glistening shot in a barber chair and then they go home and their beard feels worse than ever. We can get that shot in a different way. Another never ever. If water is an ingredient, it's not a beard oil, a beard balm, or a beard butter. We get a lot of these beard butters that are kind of like sour cream consistency. That's not a beard butter. Why is water the first ingredient? Because water is the cheapest ingredient on planet Earth when it comes to cosmetics. It's just a filler. There's no purpose for that. When we have a beard, our main purpose is locking in the moisture, locking in the style. Water's just going to evaporate and go away immediately and isn't going to add any value to that. So if you see a beard oil and it has water, that's not a quality ingredient. We should be looking for good carriers, uh, things like jojoba, like argan, like metal foam. All those are going to be things, and we can, there's a million different ones that we can go over there. And then the last thing here is the pH balance of a beard requires beard-specific water-based products such as wash and conditioner. You don't want to use head hair shampoo and conditioner on your beard because the pH is different of our skin and the hairs, F scientifically different. So treating it the same way is going to damage those hairs. So we want to make sure we're looking for a good quality beard wash and a good quality beard conditioner. Luckily, we do have some good beard companies over in the expo today for you guys to check out. And it all comes down to just balancing out those, those pH levels. All right, beard myths. This one I always find fun because you've probably heard these. You've probably had somebody say this to you. Uh, I know we get them all the time. So number one, your beard grows back faster if you shave. I've heard that probably every day for the last five years, and it's false. There's absolutely no impact on growth by shaving at all. Where that comes from is the hair is the thickest at the base. Your, your beards, your hair right now is thickest where it meets the face. The only difference is when you shave it, you see that portion the most when it grows out a day or two, and people think, oh man, it's coming in way thicker. No, it just gets thinner as it grows out. That's the structure of the hair. Life happens, right? On my shirt, my beard is brushing on my shirt. That's going to slowly start to wear away at it. And it's just, it just gets conditioned with, the, with life. Your beard's potential peak in men's, what, essentially what causes your beard growth is this testosterone called DHT. So to grow a beard, you have to have DHT and you have to be sensitive to it. And when males reach their peak DHT levels and sensitivity is their late 30s and early 40s. So what will happen is oftentimes guys at 18 will be like, I'm going to grow a beard. They're like, I'm not shaving anymore. And they try to grow a beard and it looks horrible. Why? Because they're not grown yet. They don't have their full DHT, their full testosterone. And so they're like, ah, screw it, I'm going to shave. And they shave for 10 years. And then somebody says, hey, you should try growing a beard. And then when they're 30... They grow a beard and it's full, it's amazing. They're like, oh my gosh, the shaving for 10 years must have made it grow better. No, it, you just had more to stay, you're more manly now, right? It's the same thing. DHT is what gives you a lower voice. It's what gives you uh, chest hair. That's why these things happen during puberty, right? That's when those, those, uh, those hairs start to pop out in places they did not before, which is different than your head hair. So that's a huge, huge factor is guys have that perception that because they shaved, it got better. No, you just got older. That's the only difference. And it can be later. There's some guys that reach their peak in their 50s and 60s even. So growing does not depend on the trim. Same idea here with the trim. If you trim the end of your beard, it'll grow faster. No, that, that is false. The growth happens from the base, happens from your face. Trimming the end has no 
anything to do with what, your fa what the hair is doing, right? Our hair, cell, our hair is essentially dead skin cells. They're stacked together and formed with a, a nice like little outer layer of protection. And it can change the appearance. It can change your perspective. Sometimes on our show, we'll see a beard that looks bigger, looks fuller after a trim. Well, it's because they got rid of the transparency. They got rid of those areas that made it look weak. So it's just an appearance and perspective thing, and it can't be healthier. Right? If you have a beard hair that's splitting down at the bottom and starts to, to branch off and you trim it, it looks healthier, feels healthier, it's a better appearance, but it's not growing any faster. If you do have increased growth, it's because you probably got healthier, you were eating better, you were drinking more water, you were exercising, uh, you were getting more protein, those types of things in your, in your diet. All right, beard trim mistakes. Now, if there's anything to take away from from this class here for barbers, it is these mistakes that we hear all the time and they're really, really demoralizing. This first one comes courtesy of our Fred Steve over here, who he trims his own beard, but for the content, we have both been to a barber once for like a significant trim on our beards. Uh, mine, I have a video, it was uh, a local Detroit barber, Tony, I always mess up his last name. Um, he's crazy with the shears, last name's with an S, Anybody know Tony Satari, Santario? It was a good experience. It was a really good experience, but I like prefer trim mine. Steve went and they took the neckline up way, way too high. And we were like, okay, no big deal. It's gonna come back a couple of months, like a couple of weeks, a month later. And it took way longer. How long do you? It really never did. See, I, I shaved actually, we're doing videos about growing it back for guys that are starting a beard. And it never filled in. Yeah. It was like, and we get that all the time. And this is super important for a couple of reasons. Number one, appearance, of course, right? His had this big looping arch on his beard and it just didn't look good. But number two is the neckline should be trimmed and should be cleaned relative to the goal of the beard. And that's so important. If you have a goal of your beard getting this big, you wanna leave that neckline alone as long as they can. Because what the neckline does is gives you the density, the thickness, and the backing of the beard, right? Our face grows right here. It grows down. But that's a really thin layer. If you want it to seem like it is full, like it is dense, it's that undergrowth that is going to give you that backing. And if you take that neckline up too high and they're growing it out, it's going to be like they have a little curtain on their face. And we don't want that. When you see a beard intrinsically, instinctually, you see a thick beard, like, oh, that's, that's a manly, that's a strong beard. And it's because of that neckline. Now, if a beard is gonna be shorter and they wanna maintain a shorter beard, you absolutely can keep a higher neckline. You can keep that up, but we don't want it to go too high, right? We don't want that neckline to be on the jaw. We don't want it to be something that is going to be uh, impacted where it, it, looking at it's just off. But the biggest thing is the neckline should be relative to the goal. If they're telling you, I'm going for a big beard, we want to try and leave that neckline as low as possible and so they can grow into it. And that is a big difference, I believe, that, that I'm going to talk about later in the show, is oftentimes a beard, especially when we're talking about males with head hair versus their beards, most males are kind of maintaining their head hair, right? I don't know a ton of guys in my life that are actively growing really long hair. But I do know a lot of guys that are growing longer beards. They're on this journey to grow their beard out. That's a big difference when it comes to like the strategy of how you trim it. So the neckline going too high is a huge, huge, biggest one that we've seen. The next one is less is more. Almost every entry we get to the show that has a, a beard that went to a barber and they're upset is the barber took off too much. Now there's a lot to this to unpack on the reasons why, right? You have the intentions of the client and then you have the end product something disconnected in between there, and there's a lot of possibilities why. Number one complaint is going to the barber and they took off too much. Make the trim relative to their goal, just like their neckline. And again, it's about that maintaining. So what will happen is, and I think I have it on a slide about lingo, is oftentimes guys that are going in for their beard, they don't understand how to convey what they want. So they'll go in and say something along the lines of, hey, can I get a clean up? And for them, they think it's just, or a shape up right? They think it's just, I just want a little bit off the outside, maybe just on the sides, just a little bit. And then the barber's like, ooh, I see this masterpiece in here. I'm going to go and shape it the way that I think they want. And then they leave and they're like, 
they don't want to say something because they're not used to barbershops, and they get home, and they just unload on the internet, right? They just say how terrible this is, I couldn't believe it. But they didn't give you any specifics. But also the barber didn't ask more, right? That's a huge, huge, huge aspect there. And I do know a lot of barbers that when a guy will go in, right? I trimmed my beard last night, and I only took off maybe a quarter inch. And if you were to tell a barber that, there's a lot of barbers that are like, man, he's about to pay 25 bucks and tip me $10 to take off a quarter inch. Like, I don't feel like I'm doing anything. Like, I don't feel like I'm doing this, right? The saying is clippings on the floor, right? I want to see, I feel like I need to have clippings on the floor. And the guy's like, no, I just simply want a little bit off the bottom. And there's that disconnect there. So taking off too much, I've, I don't know if I've ever heard a guy come back from the barber and be like, ah, he didn't take off enough. For the beard. I literally don't think I've heard that in five years. But I could tell you hundreds and hundreds of stories of guys saying they took off too much. We could pull up our Facebook group right now, and we have people post it every day. And then here's a big one. And I know this is, is likely a disconnect from many beliefs and a disconnect from the way you approach head hair. But give me a chance and hear me out on this. Trim a beard from the style in which they wear it. Do not wash a beard before trimming. Do not tell them to come in with no products. Trim the beard from the way they style it. You know, like the hashtag woke up like this? Well, I did not wake up like this. I went through a whole process to get my beard ready today that included taking a shower, washing it, using conditioner. Then afterwards, I dried it to a damp-like state. I applied beard oil. I waited five minutes to let it do its job. Then I used heat from a blow dryer on the majority of my beard. Then I used a heated brush on my sideburns and my mustache. That's my process. There are barbers that would say, no, 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 no beard oil, don't do any of that, take a shower, come in. The problem is when I take a shower and I don't use heat, my beard bunches up. It's curly, it's wavy, and it's a different shape and a different length. So then when I go into the barber shop, if he, was, he or she was to trim from that point, and then I go in the next day to style my beard, it is unlike anything I wanted. You need to trim it from the way I wear it. That's really, really important. With the exception of no solid products. You obviously don't want to trim a beard that has a bunch of wax in it. You don't want to trim a beard that has a bunch of butter in it. But you should encourage them to style their beard the normal way they do. Because there's no way possible I could get back to this style if you trimmed it from my natural state. And I see that problem a lot. And that one leads to guys shaving. They, they feel so defeated, so butchered, because it's not like they, they go to style it and the underbeard's hanging out here. This is doing this. We've got whoop-de-whoop -whoop and swoopy-swoop everywhere. They end up just quitting and shaving the beard off. So that's really, really important one for here. And again, I know that's often different than head hair, but keep in mind, the beard is different, right? Different texture, different thickness, different sebum oil. There's so much that's different to that. Um, so, man, I hope, hope people consider that one. And then, again, I kind of talked about this earlier. Most beardsmen don't know lingo. They do not know what a shape-up is, a lineup, a clean-up, or a trim. And a lot of guys have egos. We don't like, right, what's the, the stereotype? We don't like asking for directions. It's the same thing in a barber shop. When guys aren't comfortable, there's not a, a ton of guys that have huge personalities that are going to ask you the questions and walk you through it. They're just going to go in there and really hope for the best. And there's a lot of guys when, when the trim is not the way they want, on the inside, they are pooping their pants, but they're not going to say a word to you. They're going to keep it cool, calm, and collected and leave the barbershop and then blast you to everyone they know. But you wouldn't even know when they left. So you've got to keep, keep that in mind that they don't speak up. Have them walk you through what they want, right? For me, I would have said, hey, about a quarter inch off the bottom, leave the sides alone, don't touch the face of the beard, leave the mustache alone, have them walk you through it, and ultimately have them show you a picture, right? There's a million beard styles, a million beard pictures out there. I have guys send me pictures and I draw lines on it where I think their shape should be. They bring that to their barber. That's hard to mess up, right? So have them show you a picture and then ask questions. Again, they may be too manly to, to kind of ask you what they are thinking and wondering. All right. And then the last one I think I have here before questions is the concept of heat plus tension equals direction. This is not something that guys grow up being taught. This is not something that is often perceived as being manly, right? And that's the idea of using heat on your beard. I have a YouTube channel. I get three to 500 comments a day. 
probably about 10 of them are calling me girls, calling me feminine, saying I'm worse than their wife, calling me a girly boy, all that stuff, right? That's the, the perception of a man, right? He uses a blow dryer, what a sissy. But then the same time, I'll go to the gas station and that same guy's wife will compliment me on my beard, right? Your beard is a walking billboard for how you treat yourself. Women like confidence. Women like someone who takes care of themselves. And a beard will show you that, right? If you see this beard, you don't think homeless. You don't think all these terrible stereotypes, right? You think, oh, wow, that guy really cares about what he's doing. And oftentimes, the way you do anything is the way you do everything. So you're, you're given this billboard that you have this appreciation for how you treat yourself. And one of the best ways is by using heat. I mentioned it earlier. I use a blow dryer every single day. I use a heated brush every single day. And as long as you do it properly, especially on a beard, which is much more resilient than the head hair. Remember, it's thicker. Remember, we have these, these different coarser hairs. As long as you do it properly, there's absolutely nothing wrong with heat. I actually have a peer-reviewed scientific journal from Harvard that shows that when done properly, heat is healthier than air drying with a beard. Literally, the cortex damage, the inner part of the hair, is more damaged from prolonged water retention than it is by doing it properly with heat. Now, heat, right, we want to keep it under 365 degrees. That's ideal. I'm at 320 degrees when I use a heated brush or a blow dryer. You want to make sure you have an oil down first to protect it. We want to make sure we're using heat on a damp beard, not a dry beard. All those things factor in, but it can really, really help out the health of the beard, and it's going to give you that look. Most hairs on the beard are curly. They do have waves. They do have dents. They do have dips, which a lot of that is man-made, right? If you see a pretty common problem is that when you have a beard like this, it cuts in around the jawline. There's two main reasons for that. One is a new one is mask. When you wear a mask, it tries to fit towards your chin, and any guys that have a beard know the feeling of a mask beard, the worst. And then the other is poor grooming. When you get a boar's bristle brush or you get a comb, you're used to going along your face, and then the second your jawline is not there, you're pushing in with that comb. You're pushing in with that brush, and it's causing that dent. You're training your hair every single time you do that in the wrong direction. So using heat can really, really, really change the way that your beard has an appearance. My beard looks nothing like this, especially my sideburns. They get curled up. They look bad. They look almost like greasy, and, and, and using heat tames them, controls them. And it allows you to be able to not – I don't like wax. There's a lot of people that use mustache wax, that use beard balm. I don't like the feeling of it. I don't like to be like restricted. I want the wind outside to like hit my beard and have it bounce back again. And I can achieve that through using heat. And so that's one big thing is it's okay to use that heat. It's okay to tell your clients, hey, can I try a blow dryer in your beard? Can, can you just hear me out on this? Let me just try to style it and then see what they think. Because that purposefulness goes a long, long, long way. All right. So that's my beard. What, what time are you? 30? Perfect. That's, what, that's almost exactly what I was hoping for there. So like I said, I'm happy to cover like how I make money and income and, and all that type of stuff here. Uh, and then obviously there's other classes starting right now, so feel free uh, to jet out. But does anybody have any questions on anything beard care related? Sammy? Um, how long would you recommend between beard washing? Oh, great question. So that's one of the, I almost included that as a myth, right? When I first started really getting into taking care of my beard, it was the big thing that was like, wash your beard once a week, no more than that. And the answer is relative to the person's lifestyle. If you work out and you get sweaty, wash your beard, period. If you work in an air conditioned home and you're not really active, maybe try every other day, every two or three days. For me, I am every other day washing and then every other wash I follow with a conditioner. So like today was a wash and condition day. Tomorrow will be just rinse. And then the following day will be just wash. And I go through that rotation. But the biggest thing is if they get dirty, if they get sweaty, wash your beard, right? Because especially when we're talking about being around your mouth, right? If you have a beard that's not smelling right, right? Not looking right and you go to kiss somebody, that's a horrific experience, right? I'll hear a lot of guys like, my wife doesn't like to kiss my beard. I'm like, well... Might be a little bit more to that story than, than, uh, than you're telling me. So, and there is a textural thing. My wife doesn't love the big mustache, and, and I, I get that too. Uh, but yeah, I would say it's relative to their lifestyle. Yeah, and that's super important. It's one of the biggest things I go over because if, you, if your beard is building up with sodium, it is building up with dirt, it's going to really restrict the growth. It's really going to restrict the feel. And a lot of guys will say like, oh, my beard feels so brittle. Well, you're not allowing the nutrients to get to where they need to go. So yeah, great question. Love that. 
Other questions? What do you think about uh, two-in-ones? Hate. Hate with a passion. So I actually just did a video on this. Uh, two things that I've really gone away from for beards are two-in-one products and co-washing. Right, so the idea of using a conditioner by itself on, a, on your beard, for the main reason that for the beard, if it's a two-in-one product, it can't do both jobs. The, the wash is meant to get in and break everything up and, and clear everything out, and the conditioner is meant to seal and coat, so it slides through. So there's no way the product can go on your face and be like, hey, I'm gonna take this job, I'm gonna go in and clean everything out, and I'm gonna take this job and go and seal it. It just essentially just pushes everything to your face. And so it kind of locks it in there, now, I do like a leave-in conditioner. There is a, and, and you're probably aware of like the LOC method and different things, definitely a place for that. Definitely a place for that, but I'm just not a big fan of the, the two-in-ones, and there's not many that exist on the, the beard market. Um, I know uh, Bulldog has one and Beard Guys have one, but those are about the only ones that really stand out to me. So yeah, I, great question. I just was thinking about that intensely. Good. Any other ones? Yes. Yeah. Great question. Yeah, so when I said earlier the number one reason guys shave beards is that itchy phase, that might be 1A. Patchiness might be the number one reason, right? They grow it and they feel like discouraged. They feel like, man, I don't, I don't have a good enough beard. I can't be like yours. So the, the correct main answer is patience and healthy habits, right? Work out, eat better, uh, exfoliate, get that comb into the skin, do all those things, and, and just have patience. It'll get better. Most of the time when we see patchy beards, it's guys that are like 18 to 26. They're pretty young. And it, they don't want to hear it, but it will get better. It, it will 100% get better for most people. Yes, yes. Get it to the skin. So put that beard oil on and then get down to the skin to exfoliate, what that's gonna do is force the blood flow to go to the surface, and that's gonna really help promote that growth. Okay. Yep, but yep. Yeah, I have a client where like, he doesn't even want me to touch it or anything, but it's just like all curly. Oh, no, you got, so, yeah, and, and different beard types lend themselves to different uh, tools better. So if it's like a really curly, bushy, kind of dense beard, like a pick comb, Get through that and get right into the skin. Fantastic, fantastic. Okay, yeah, I'll check it out. Yeah, what's that? Yeah, and drinking water. Like most people are severely dehydrated and drinking water will make the biggest difference, right? Good kind of golden rule is take your body weight and drink half that number in ounces. So I weigh about 220 pounds, so I try to drink uh, 110 ounces a day. I usually go for 128, which is a gallon. Um, so drinking water is so, so important to, to grow a beard. Uh, but you're right, patchy beards is, is, is super common, super common, especially with like the 16 year olds that comment, I can't grow a beard. Worry about parallel parking first, all right? We'll get, we'll get back to you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'll check that one out and I'll be able to, to help you there. Great question. All right, anybody else, any other questions on, on these here? Nothing? All right, well, cool. I think that will do it. I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you, everybody. And I'll be hanging around all day if anybody has any questions or, or wants to talk or anything. Shout out to Doug for filming over there. Thank you, Doug. <laughs>